Welcome to another episode of Dirt Cheap Daily. On this episode, we are going to do an ABS delete. I went to the junkyard this morning and I was playing around with a few different cars and I found a first gen legacy that was non-ABS and was looking at it. Right next to it was a second gen non-ABS and on the other side of it was a second gen with ABS so I could compare everything and see what parts went where and everything was pretty similar. I had already started taking apart the first gen and so I didn't want to do all that again on the second gen because the first gen and the second gen parts are the same so I figured I might as well just pull them from the first gen so I have all my parts that I got from the junkyard so I have the hard lines that run across the engine bay I have a new master cylinder that has three ports to it I have this little guy that I don't really know what it does but it's on there this guy to replace this one because this one's lower profile and I like that especially because my turbo is going to be sitting right there. So the first thing I'm going to do is get in and pull off my air box so that I have a lot more space to work back there up against the firewall. And down in here, there's a whole bunch of brake lines that run in and around that general area. And so I'm going to pull them all off. And then we can start putting on our new ones. Now, some of you might be asking, why would you want to take off an ABS system? Before I even did the manual swap, I was checking the brake fluid and I filled it up a bit and put it back on and the next time I drove the car the ABS light came on which basically means your ABS isn't working or it's disengaged there's something wrong with it and so it doesn't work I don't know how to fix it ABS systems are kind of a mystery to me still I really understand brake systems but ABS all that control module and everything I don't get why and so whatever so I just pulled the bulb on the console and so there's no ABS light, doesn't bother me, and the ABS, the ABS doesn't work. But for me, that's fine. I actually prefer non-ABS cars when you start hitting the brakes and it starts pumping back at me. I'm not used to that. All the cars that I've really had were from the 80s. None of them had ABS, and so I'm used to driving and locking up the brakes and having to pump the brake. It's up to you guys to figure out if you want to keep ABS or not. Another perk is that I will be getting rid of this huge... ABS control module which will give me space to run my air cleaner right here next to the opening that I've cut because my turbo is going to be sitting here and I will have extra space for my air cleaner and it just tidies up your engine bay a whole lot which I don't really care about but it'll be nice in this case because I'm adding a turbo to the engine bay so here we go All right, so the first thing you want to do is come in here and pull off these brake lines off of the brake master cylinder. The way it's bolted in right now gives this a lot of rigidity and makes it so that you can break these loose if they're hard to get off. Another thing you can do is pop off your fuel filter so you have some more space. That way I can get to this one really easy. Well, I might have just found a lucky one at the junkyard and it just wanted to come off because these ones don't want to come off. They don't have to be torqued very much and these ones are torqued a lot and it's just starting to bend. I'm going to come in before I strip it completely and just stick a vice grip on it because vice grips are the cure-all. There we go. See how easy that was to break loose with light strips. There's a second one back here. Hopefully it'll come off easier. And it does, good. All right, with both of those off, we can come in here and take off the master cylinder bolts. sensor right pulling off that sensor gives you more space to get into this this back one and pull forward and try and pop those brake lines out and it'll go it'll pull straight off there we go 
Now at this point, it's always a good thing to grab the one you're going to replace it with and check to make sure they're the same thing. And uh, they are. Mine is crazy dirty, obviously. But besides that, they're the same thing. But you can see this one has a second hole Ugh. in the bottom. And that's what we need for a non-ABS system. Wow, that's real nasty. I think I might come in here and spray that so it doesn't keep getting even more nasty. You can see that my master cylinder was leaking before because my brake booster has corroded and lost all the paint right underneath the master cylinder. So sweet, we're replacing a faulty part. Who knew? We can come in here and we want to just rip out all of these lines. So, um, they're kind of stupid to get to. So you reach down with a long screwdriver and you can usually pop them out of their little plastic holders. Usually. <laughs> usually is the key word here. It's not coming off easy, so we're gonna make it work. It's gonna be a little more difficult, but We'll make it work. At this point, we're gonna move over to this one. So these ones you just pop right off. Here we go. We're also gonna take these two off. Okay, all those are off. Now we're gonna come in and pull that guy off. And there you go. I'm also going to take this guy off at the same time, just because I don't want it anymore. I pulled off all these connectors. I started the car back up and they didn't do anything. No check engine lights. So if you think removing the ABS is going to throw a code or anything, don't worry about it. As many wires and things that plug into it, it seems like it should have more of an impact on the rest of the ECU, but it doesn't. So feel free to unplug it and remove it like I'm doing. The next thing I'm going to do is come in and pull off every single one of these, which is going to be awesome fun. come right off. They're the two that would plug in and go to the rear. There are those two. Here we go. There's those four. I guess six off. So now we're gonna come in and actually take the ABS unit out. All right, there's one more right here on the inside of the fender. Luckily I have all this space to get a ratchet in on it. Ta-da! There you go. If you didn't know what it was, it says ABS on the bottom of it. Seems like they should put that on the top. <laughs> anyway, look how much space we got now. This canister is kind of stupid but I'm leaving it for right now mostly just because I haven't 
even figured out what it does. Anyway, so now we have all of these guys that go all over the place. So, let's see. We're going to just get in there and pry them off and start dealing with the hassle they are to get out. down there Alright, so I climbed underneath and pulled that little pop pin thingy off. The connector anyway. So that I can get them out through the top or to see if I can push them out from the top. car you want to grab your tin right here you want to pull that off there we go now we'll go to the other side do the same thing over here Connected yet, so it's juicing. So be careful of that. Don't get hit in the eye because that sucks. <laughs> With that one done down there, we can pop this out up here. And there you go, there is an ABS delete. <laughs> no, now we need to put a non ABS line back in. This is the part that takes a lot more finesse because we have all of these big nice lines that are bent, bent up to fit in there really nicely and we want to be able to get them in without ruining them, but it's really hard to get them in. It was hard to getting them out. I'm assuming it's going to be even more difficult to get them back in. This is the part where patience is really important. Because <laughs> they're your brake lines. You don't want to be messing them up. First thing that we want to do, now that everything is out, <sighs> is put this guy back in. I'm not sure what it is, and I have no idea what it does. If anybody wants to let me know, please put it in the comments. I might have already done my research. And so, I might have figured out what it does. Um, anyway, so the first thing we want to do is put this in. I'm actually going to go and spray it off a bit. Because it's kind of nasty looking. Like I always say, it's easier working with clean parts. So, let's clean this off real quick. And then we'll put it in. 
All right, with that cleaned off, we're now gonna put it in. And to do that, Subaru is being awesome, just like they are. Built this car in a very great way where you can just pop out that little plug. And what do you know, now we have two holes where we can bolt up this little piece. And this guy is going to get fed. Right. Right down there. And just like always, I brought my bolts from the junkyard. With that in, we are going to put in our other lines now. I'm really hoping this isn't too big of a bear, but I'm kind of past the point of no return, so you do what you can. Okay, so I have my lines. One of them, this one, I marked it at the junkyard with this little piece of conduit so that I would remember that this one comes straight over and goes straight to this wheel. The other two come over and plug in over here. Yeah, that makes sense. When I was pulling it out, I had to open this up so it was at a funky shape that didn't make sense. But now it makes sense. So um, this one is gonna mirror this other guy. around and up like that and those two plug in right there Ta -da. right once you have everything routed it should look something like this with two that are gonna plug into your master cylinder one that plugs into the bottom and then this one that is plugging into the top of this doohickey um, go ahead and tighten this one and torque this one you can torque the two that are plugging into your actual brake lines the soft lines and um, now we're gonna put our new master cylinder on and lead the brakes and we'll be done now the tricky part of uh getting all these lines to line up and screw in might be kind of a, a trick okay so here is my engine bay as it sits right now obviously no ABS unit but I have these terrible brake lines just kind of hanging out all over the place so when I was popping these off, I actually just broke them off. And so even when I try to stick these in, they don't go in and they don't stay in. I also, when I was routing this one, totally forgot that I needed to route it down in here. And so it's hanging out, which looks like crap, but it works just fine. Mostly I was just at the end of the day. Um, I needed to get the car back on the road and uh, I didn't want to take it all apart again and reroute it when I realized that I'd done that. So it is how it is for right now. Basically I just skipped all of the install of those because it's not fun to watch. It looks like crap. It was terrible to do. So I came up with a solution. What I would do is just use the existing lines and get a flaring tool and a cutter and cut them down to size. So basically these ones that connect in here on the ABS ones they come up and they connect to the ABS unit but they run right there. You can see that little connector point that holds them all in place. They would run right there. So what I would do in the future if I was doing this again which I might be doing again is take these the ones that run to the ABS unit and just bend them up, slide back your uh, your nut, 
slide them back, cut them off to where they fit, and flare them yourself, and you'd be done. You'd have a super clean install still. You'd be able to get rid of some of them that run back to the other side from your ABS unit, and that would help clean it up. It would obviously look better than mine, and having it stable would actually be better than mine. So as they sit right now, when you push on the brake, these lines aren't fastened to anything, so they can kind of flex as pressure goes through them which is great and makes for a relatively squishy brake pedal which is what you're looking for right <laughs> I'm gonna figure out some way to attach these um, to the firewall so they don't move I'm also going to build a master cylinder brace so it'll come off of down in here and just butt up against the end of the master cylinder as I was doing it I realized that my firewall is pretty flexible um, and it could really benefit from a master cylinder brace. All the usual brands make some kind of brace. Look them up yourself or wait for my DIY on how to build your own. Um, but basically, it, people say that it does the same amount for pedal feeling as stainless steel or braided lines. So as of right now, I have a really squishy pedal because all of those lines can just flex. So just because I have a squishy pedal doesn't mean that I'm not actually stopping. I actually have more brake response by deleting the ABS than I did beforehand. Now that could be other factors, um, but it, there were longer brake lines to actually get to the calipers than there are right now, so maybe. But my brakes feel awesome besides the squish. I have really good brake control. I'm happy to report on that. Um, but yeah, I, I might be doing this in the future, um, helping out how my car got like this, his wide body Impreza wagon. Um, his ABS hasn't worked for like a year and he just pulled out the bulb in the back of his dash too. Um, so we might end up deleting his ABS so he can be uh, cool like me. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. Uh, It's a pretty simple thing to do, but really, yeah, just cut off your old lines and bend them to fit into that dealio because it's not worth doing all the brake stuff. I mean, I did get everything at the junkyard for like $12, so that includes the master cylinder and that check valve doohickey. I did figure out what that thingy is that sits right there. It, uh is some kind of proportioning valve. You don't want the rear brakes to lock up before the front brakes, otherwise you'll just spin out. Get out of your truck. And that proportioning valve, I don't think is actually hooked up right now. Um, and that is part of why I have such squishy brakes. So I'm going to run a cable to that, which will go into the inside of my car, and I'm gonna be able to set it at different adjustments. So I can pull on the cable, and if I want, lock up all four brakes at the same time. I can run it halfway and have a normal car, or I could run it just in the front, which I don't know why I would want to do that. I think originally the the cable on that connected to some part of the suspension. As you slammed on the brakes, your nose would tuck, and I think that kind of suspension drag in the front would tell it to lock up the rears so that you're not like nose diving. Um, I think that's part of that proportioning valve. Kind of funky, pretty cool, a bit of engineering. None of the cars at the junkyard had that cable. I don't even know where it's supposed to route to stock. So I'm, I'm just gonna do it myself and have a cool little way to adjust my brakes. Yeah, follow me on Instagram so you don't miss out on cool pictures and uh, turbo updates. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week. We'll see you then.